A little bit of feedback from Facebook here. Thought it was pretty good here. Anthony Chelafonte. Hopefully you got that right, Anthony. Experienced techs don't need this crap. Solve that with a laser pointer. <laughs> All right, that's awesome. I, I love getting good feedback from people. And you know what? I'm not telling you you can't figure it out. What I am telling you is you can't figure it out as fast because both of us are going to have to do two things. Both of us are going to have to start the system. Both of us are going to have to let it stabilize. And both of us are going to have to make an assessment after it's stable of what's going on. But here's what I know. You're probably going to let it start. And you're going to let it run for 10 minutes because that's what the factory tells you. Let it run for 10 minutes to stabilize. I'm going to use an algorithm to figure out exactly when it's stable. When your probes are finally reading stable, you're going to start to now make an assessment of what's going on. What's your target temperature split? What's your target superheat? What's your target subcooling? What should your high pressure be, your low pressure be? And I don't mean about what they should be. I want to know exactly what they should be. Because if you don't know exactly what your pressure should be before you hook up your gauges, what are you hooking them up for? Let's face it. You look at these readings on this tablet here, there's a lot going on here, right? We have what looks like normal suction pressure. We have what looks like a little high head pressure, but again, you have the advantages of having the target. Suction line temperatures may be a little bit low. Superheat's a little bit low. Subcooling is normal. Liquid line temperature's a little bit high. Let's look at the air side here. Return air conditions look about normal. Supply air conditions looks like we have a little bit low supply air dry bulb temperature. But again, you might glance at it and say, hey, it doesn't look too bad at all. But at the touch of a button with Measure Quick here, when I hit the next screen, I can see a couple things. Number one, I have low sensible capacity, which means this system is going to run a lot longer than it normally would to try and, and cool the home off, right? I may have a potentially blocked, fouled evaporator coil or air filter. I have low airflow definitively. I have a dirty condenser definitively, right? System may be overcharged with, with refrigerant. Total external static pressure is high. The supply static's high. Now, I did this all in seconds because it took the equipment a few minutes to stabilize, and then boom, I have all the answers at my fingertips. And oh, by the way, Mrs. Jones, you're at a 46% F. Now, what neither of us know is last year we came out here, serviced it, it was fine. This year, Mrs. Jones has closed off three or four of her registers on the system, right? Because her kids went to college. Who the heck knows? What also we don't know is that when she washed all those clothes and the kids went to college, the dryer vent plugged up the whole condenser and it's full of crap, right? You may be able to see it. Maybe not. Maybe it's a split condenser. Who knows? We know. Measure Quick knows. We know it in seconds. And it's not about figuring it out. It's about figuring it out quickly. It's productivity. And that's what we need to focus on.